Now, you see, this is different. The Derby County situation is different, yeah. Simon, because as we know, Mel is meeting with the players, coaches, academy staff this morning. And in as much as we know, he's saying, that's it. I've yeah. thrown enough at this. Yeah. I'm out. Which is, is right to some extent. I mean, I, it's a double edged sword because I, I try to be balanced and fair because there's one part of me that thinks, you know, come on, Mel. Come on, mate. You made these choices. You made these decisions. And you've got to own them. And if you've got the ability to continue, then you really kind of owe it to the position that you took on when you became the owner of Derby. There's the other side of the argument where I go, well, there's no nobility in the poorhouse. Why does he want to put himself in the poorhouse? Why does he want to ruin everything he's got elsewhere in his life for a football club? So I'm really torn between the two because yeah, I know yeah. what it means to the fans. I know what it means to the community. I know what it means to the people that work for it. Well, that's and, right. and Mel will say, well, I didn't do 200 million quid because I'm a miserable, horrible little curmudgeon. I did my best. But when you get to a point where... You know, some of the decisions that you've made, nobody made you pay Wayne Rooney the money that you've made. You pay. Nobody made you bring in, from what I hear, people that are in the coaching staff that are on ridiculous salaries for championship-level people that have made you sign the deal and then have no real success with them. And all of those things lead you to a point where where does your responsibility, both moral and financial, turn off against your self-preservation against the right that you mm. have as an individual to protect yourself. I, I nearly sent myself to the poorhouse. And what, 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 wonderful. What, what, did, what did that achieve for my family? What happened with you, though? I I, I want to push a bit more, Simon, yeah, if I well, may. Thank you. I know, I you, I know you well <laughs> enough. I mean, what voices were in your ears when you, when you were the, the well, most not, dire well, not, moments? Not the right ones, apparently. I was very brave, and I was, and I was very proud as well. And sometimes pride becomes before a fall. I believed like some demented King Canoe, I could command the sea to go back. And it wasn't a sea, it was a tsunami of problems that I had. And I was trying to fight it, un unaware of the challenges that were going on, unaware of covetous eyes that were looking at it, waiting for me to fall over. That's just business sometimes, and it becomes more emotional when you're so invested. Whatever you think of me, and whatever people think of me, whatever Palestinians think of me, they can never, ever, ever question my commitment or my integrity. I got things wrong, I made mistakes, I said things that were wrong, but I always did it for the right reason. Now, that doesn't excuse mistakes, because good people aren't supposed to make mistakes. And when you're in charge of a football club, it's your responsibility to run it well. That's why I rail against the governance, because you've got to take away the pressures. Mel Morris is a Derby County fan. That brings an extra factor into the equation. That may He would never, ever have envisaged that he was going to do 200 million quid, if that's indeed what he's done. I never envisaged that I was going to do the money that I did, comparative wealth in proportion of my wealth I gave up far more of it to back what? to back 10 years of, of a difficult time often in an industry that's very disingenuous and unrewarding do, but then, do you wish that people had said stop I mean I've yeah, got to ask you your dad, he, yeah, uh, my dad played yeah. for a palace God bless him yeah. you would seek his advice what did he say? well I sought his advice while we're having this moment to share in this sort of um, rinsing of one's soul I sought his advice in, in the last summer because I knew I was in trouble and I knew no one was going to help me. And I knew that because my attitude was when you start cocking a schnook at the football world and you start telling people truths, right, they don't like it. They, don't, they make sure that you have problems. So I knew no one was going to help me. And the only thing I was ever going to be successful with was with my, by myself. So I said to my father, very simply, that I'm in trouble here. What do you think I should do? And my dad being my dad, believing that I was a racehorse, sort of said, you're still in the game, son. Keep hitting the ball back over the net. Now... That wasn't the greatest advice because what it did was it made me hear what I wanted to hear. It gave me an excuse to do something that I knew probably I should have done what Mel did. I should have done what Mel's done, which is take away the responsibility on myself and put it to administration and say, well, I've got to save myself. You regret that? Yeah, well, of course I do because I serve nobody any good besides other people that got the football club. I cleared most of the problems. The people talk about Palace being £30 million in debt. It wasn't £30 million in debt. It was £30 million in debt because 23 of it was to me and I wasn't calling it. So this nonsense I've had to listen to over the years, mm. and I've written about it, and it's not time to serve this up. The difficulty for Mel is that Mel has more of a choice than I had. And and the scale and the numbers, I think, are greater, but so is the wealth that's behind the people that own the football club. So we've all got to put it relative, but there is a right. Mel Morris does have a right to say enough is enough. And he will be a fundamental part of Derby's future because someone has got to bankroll this administration... Someone has got to do something with this stadium, and Mel Morris owns the stadium and may well have the keys to the funding of the administration. So whilst it's tragic, Derby will not go bust. There won't be a liquidation. There will be a restructuring of Derby, and the quicker it can be done, the less damage will be done. Yeah. The main beneficiaries will be the administrators, of course. But unfortunately, this must be... These sort of things, as much as there's mismanagement in part, 
it also has to look at the governance of the industry. It's not because I'm seeking to make excuses. If you change the governance, we'll have a far better football pyramid for everybody because not just Man United, not just Man City, every club yeah. in every community means something and it can't just be... And what Mel was brilliant the other day in one thing he said when he was put on the back foot by the BBC Derby reporter saying, you've got to realise it's a privilege to own a football club. It's a privilege for five minutes. It's a responsibility. It's not a privilege. And to be a custodian of a football club is an onerous, difficult task because most of the time you're going to get it wrong and you're going to pay a lot of money to be told by people how stupid you are and how you can spend your money but you can never tell them how they can spend theirs. People buy season tickets because they want to watch something and they want to support something. In the end, it's very easy to get in a football club. It's bleeding difficult to get out and when you do get out, most of the time you get out with your reputation either damaged, your finances significantly damaged, and you haven't enjoyed the ride that much. Yeah. It's a beautiful game. It's a brilliant game. I sit here talking about football now because clearly I wanted to be involved in it. But by Christ, is it hard. And that's mm. not me going, oh, look at us poor baggers that no, own football no, clubs. No, we no. all make our choices. Yeah. But let me tell you, if you change the governance, you make it better for everybody and you've got a football pyramid that means everyone is confined. When you see documentaries like Panorama talking about kids not being able to be given support when they're releasing football clubs it's because the whole ecosystem is broken people can't afford to have councillors that let football yeah, players yeah. go it's, it's all of those things come in together in a moving part and it makes it sad and it's sad for derby fans but i guarantee you that this club will not be liquidated guarantee look, look at it's coming in i mean the messages are smart mel morris 100 percent owner 100 percent his choices 100 percent his liabilities and now he's running yeah, away. Yeah, but that's really That's easy. not fair. It's, uh, it, it, honestly. He's not, he's not running away Scott not Friedo, running away. is he? He's not running away no. unscathed. No. He's going to get his head kicked in reputation wide. He's going to be emotionally challenged. He's had health issues in his own life. And he's done 200 million quid for this. Yeah. Yes, of course it's his decisions. But you didn't have a problem when he was going for it. Yeah. There is a flip side to every argument. Will others follow Derby? Yeah, I'm sure they will. Yeah. Because the, unless you change this model, they can't not. Yeah. Unless you change this model, you simply it will be a matter of time before the next club. So you talk about damaged reputation, Simon. I mean, had it not happened at Palace, you wouldn't be sitting here with me at Talk Sport. And that's my very point. <laughs> there are upsides <laughs> no reputation to left now. There are upsides to this, my friend. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Thursday morning, ten till one, on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker, Talk Sport.